Patrick, are you still here? Yeah, Darkwin, thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hello. Hello to everyone and thank you all for your uh, presentations. And it's a pleasure to be here and I'd like to thank BT Art Salon for, for the invitation. Uh, I'd like to share my slides now, my screen, sorry. So my talk this afternoon uh, slightly moves away from the focus of the previous speakers, but I think uh, I can pick up from the discussion on the public sphere um, of art and exhibition as uh, discussed by uh, Kasumi-san, as well as the possibility of an island or an archipelagic uh, uh, ethos and methodology in curating contemporary art. So I'm going to do that through the example of the Singapore Biennale uh, in 2019, which I directed. Uh, my talk looks back on the experience of directing and curating the Singapore Biennale in 2019 uh, with the aim of reflecting on how the Biennale structure or how the Biennale platform investigates uh, persistent geopolitical issues. Specifically speaking to the construction of the region of Southeast Asia in the colonial period beginning in the 16th century through the 1960s and the imagination of the Asia Pacific. This reflection seeks to initiate a conversation on the method with which to complicate and hopefully reorient a geopolitical agenda through the varied articulations of contemporary art and their curation. This presentation will discuss works from the 2019 Singapore Biennale that stage tensions as well as propositions in crossing the expectations put in place by different modes of modernities and the Cold War. I must note that the Biennale was one of the global Biennales that was caught at the threshold of the pandemic, beginning in November 2019 and ending in March 2020. In other words, the Biennale was at the edge of the pandemic's emergence. In this analysis of the Biennale, I would like to talk about how geopolitical concerns shape the production of a Biennale. In a way, I am trying to contribute to the effort in mapping out a historiography of Biennales in Southeast Asia and how they enhance or resist geopolitical priorities. I would like to ask how, for instance, is the Biennale different from the earlier traveling and survey exhibitions organized by the ASEAN or the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, which was founded in 1967. Immediately, what comes to mind in response to this is the talent and the intelligence of the curator who mediates geopolitical requirements with critique and the contingencies of both art making and the reception of art within certain situations of encounter, such as in the museum or the Biennale. It is at this point that I would like to consider how art emerges from a place and how it transforms the place to raise the necessary geopoetic question and not to sustain the geopolitical one in which art is usually turned into an instrument of the bureaucracy or the administration of culture to produce representation or identity. The curatorial initiation therefore can struggle with the bureaucratic and administrative authority and procedures and pursue the potentially exciting life of contemporary art. This presentation focuses on the goal of, the, of this seminar to discuss the post-colonial condition. I offer to this conversation thoughts on the structure of the Biennale and its geopolitical problem, which emerges from the desire of the nation state for representation. That's one. Number two, the perceived need to consolidate a region. Number three, the demands of internationalization and the strategies of soft power. Four, the cosmopolitan and activist nature of the curatorial gesture. 
and five, the fantasies of globality. All these somehow intersect with post-colonial discourse and relate to the geopolitical legacies of the Cold War and their effects in today's globalization. Specificity of place is crucial, crucial in this discussion and Singapore Biennale's motivation to be present in the global world, particularly as a global city attuned to the experience and attention economy and the industry of cultural spectacle. This is very clear in the explanation of the first two editions of the Singapore Biennale in 2006 and 2008. So in 2006, for instance, the, the, the Biennale was, was seen, the Biennale was seen as a key component of Singapore 2006 and the key initiative of Singapore's Renaissance City Project and in time with the annual meeting of Board of Governors of the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank. So we can see this problematic uh, link between the Binali structure and uh, uh, the legacies of, of, of developmentalism and uh, global capitalism in, in the present. And then the second, the 2008 uh, iteration of the Singapore Biennale uh, was uh, part of the key, it was a key initiative supporting the Economic Strategies Committee recommendations for talent attraction and retention as the global city in Asia for pinnacle events and lifestyle offerings as well as place management of the civic district. So we can also see the link of uh, the Biennale to gentrification, for instance, or even the reclamation of land, uh, which is happening uh, quite uh, actively in Singapore. And this connects well to the discussion of Kasumi-san in Kinawa, although with a very different context. So open two weeks prior to the inaugural Singapore Grand Prix, this is the Biennale context, no? It opened before the Grand Prix, which was located around the circuit in the city. So the theme of one where encouraged local, regional, and international audiences towards new ways of seeing Singapore. So this is a, an interesting context to consider in looking at a possible alternative methodology beyond this um, uh, agenda. So I revisit in this talk the method of thinking through and putting up a single four Biennale 2019, because this might draw our attention to a critical colonial moment. I first trace the provenance or the origin of the political inspiration of the title I chose, uh, which can be linked to, the, to a quote from Salud al Gabre. So the title is Every Step in the Right Direction, and it came from Salud al Gabre, a militant dream dressmaker who took part in a revolt against the Americans in the 30s in the Philippines to demand freedom immediately and totally. This colonial incident historicizes or better still, enlivens a Biennale, and in the same vein, activates a productive comparative historical exchange between two temporalities and two geographies. In an interview with a historian in the 60s, Algabre was asked where she went after the rebellion was, was defeated. She was quick to correct the interviewer with a statement that may well be also her manifesto. According to her, no uprising fails, each one is a step in the right direction. In hindsight, Algabre anticipates a theory of resistance in the long duration of experience, as well as for present and future struggles. While the intensity of its origin lends urgency to the title I have lifted from the quote, when it is read in another light in, of another time, it loosens up 
as it speaks to a range of efforts that honors the integrity of the reflexive self and insists on the need for that self to be part of a deliberative, painstakingly democratic collective. Every step in the right direction is indebted to Al Gabre, but in the spirit in which it was voiced, it is not to be reduced to the circumstances which had forced its enunciation, even as it continually stirs up the struggle for immediate and total freedom from colonialism wherever and whenever it is heard. It is this uh, suspense no? or protracted suspense, this delay and unhurriedness towards completion that sharpens decidability and the rightful because ethical and aesthetic political action needed to tilt and therefore direct the iterative historical subject for that every step. I thought that this conceptualization of everyness, rightfulness, and direction should be fleshed out so that the voice of Al Gabri can extend beyond her historical context, which was actually already world historical because it was anti imperialist. I wanted a mode of practical politics that realizes the promise of Al Gabri's will to make a decisive step whether in a long march or in a slow drag of the feet under the auspices of an always already compromised power structure. Amanda Heng, the Singaporean artist, Amanda Heng's initiation for people to walk with her around Singapore in every step counts, addressed this desire for the Biennale to organize its idea in a subject who walks around the vicinity of the city Biennale with other people who took part in a workshop around personal history. The ethical and the geopoetic meet at this crossroad as both artists and stranger wander in the streets of Singapore as if to slow down and resist its hyper-capitalist acceleration inducing what a scholar calls an arrhythmia or a counter rhythm to a nation's relentless global progress. Heng's walk therefore helps us revisit the effects of development that are linked with colonialism, the formation of nation states and the role of capitalism in this formation. So these contexts are also the contexts that shape the desire for a Biennale. I was drawn to Al Gabre's uh, political vision because of its generous hopefulness, as well as its open character that can find space in a range of human initiatives. Moreover, how it reconsiders what it means to fail and what it means to succeed and the opposition between right and wrong, or right wing and leftist, are important steps in imagining what it means to be post-colonial. I believe in this politics, and I thought this to be productive in Singapore, a highly regulated island state that was commemorating in the same year of the Biennale, the 200 years of the arrival of British colonialism. I was intrigued by how Al Gabre's anti-colonial revolt in the Philippines would come in contact with Singapore's relationship with colonial rule as a precondition to modernity and industrialization. And of course, it's first world status in the present. The congregation series of, so this is still part, sorry, some more images of Amanda Heng's project for Singapore Biennale and also a big, uh, graphic um, work uh, around the Singapore Art Museum, uh, which is still undergoing renovation. So she put up this uh, text uh, that says, one step at a time, walking the way to stillness within. So I was interested in this kind of like slow politics slow politics that can survive 
um, uh, everyday life and can also be there for a long time and will not be exhausted no? uh, by, let us say, uh, the, the power structure. The congregation series of Alfonso Osorio was central in my curatorial framework of the Biennale. Uh, these assemblages made in the 50s and 60s were composed of a swarm of species and substances from skulls to carapaces to antlers to teeth and eyeballs, shells and mirrors and so on. If one were to look at the works of Osorio, one could find it hard to disentangle the materials he ingeniously integrated within his pieces, within his pieces, with such fascinating intricacy and density, so that the constellation of things became like mangroves or a microcosmos. And he himself thought of this baroque form not so much, not so much as an accumulation, as a continuity. According to him, they all work together. Either the bone disintegrates or it's fused into the picture. It's a step in the continuity. It's not dead, it's continuing. End of quotation. I thought that the idea of a congregation demonstrated the work of the Biennale, to gather the familiar and the eccentric in a shared space. And in this common ground, the public may deliberate upon the difficulties of difference or particularities. Osorio contributed to the language of abstract expressionism <laughs> through his artistic practice as well as his collecting interests. He was an avid early collector of Jean de Buffet and Jackson Pollock, as well as of conifers for his estate and arboretum in upstate New York. Being gay, born in the Philippines, wealthy and scholarly may have excluded him from the largely masculine late modern canon of tormented artists like Jackson Pollock. Abstract expressionism, of course, was a Cold War medium uh, promoted by the government of the United States. And it's interesting to complicate <clears throat> that narrative of abstract expressionism with the work of, uh, of um, Alfonso Osorio. Uh, so we, this was, for me, an important part of the, of the um, conceptualization of the Biennale the idea of a congregation or a coming together of species within an assemblage of, um, of high modernist uh, uh, lineage. No? So this is Alfonso Osorio in his East Hampton, Long Island estate with paintings of Jean de Buffet and Clifford Steele. Um, this is part of the congregation series. And this was the... <clears throat> presentation in Singapore. The, it was difficult. I thought of, of, of including around eight pieces of Osorio that came from New York, but it was difficult. I realized that it was difficult to bring over uh, the works or to travel the works of Osorio because of the different species that he included in the works. And so the government has to inspect each and every piece of the component of the work because some might not be allowed to, to travel because of the uh, uh, ecological rules. No? So this in itself was a curatorial problem and for me an interesting one. So if you notice there is a long wall on your left that should have contained more of the works of Osorio but since they couldn't travel from New York I was left with a blank wall. And what I did, because it was a curatorial problem, so it needed a curatorial solution. So I put here uh, the laws that govern the movement of a species. Uh, uh, this was the law that was required to be complied with in the travel of works of Osorio from New York to Singapore. Huh? Anyway, that is 
maybe for another seminar, that problem in itself. So this engagement with modernity was greatly enhanced by the presence of the works of Carlos Villa, another artist. In fact, this ensemble of pieces from Villa stood at the entrance of the main hall of the Biennale at the National Gallery, Singapore. It was my wish to begin with a story of migration. Villa was a Filipino-American artist who in the late 60s and onward labored through the crisis of identity in America, in the United States, gripped in systemic racism, even as it envisioned a multicultural society and wished for a perfect union. He was a teacher, activist, organizer. Two projects in his name were very important. Other Sources, an American Essay in 1976, and Worlds in Collision in 1989. So this is Other Sources, an American Essay. So Other Sources was an exhibition and a gathering of dissidents of different allegiances under the atmosphere of music, food, performance, and conversations. It was convened in 1976, the year that when the United States was commemorating the 200th anniversary of the American Revolution. So this too was an instance of the post-colonial within the United States. So these are just sample of some images from other sources, uh, other sources, an American essay. And then finally, Worlds in Collation, Dialogues on Multicultural Art Issues, was a um, in the 90s, uh, I think the year is 1989 to the early 90s. So Worlds in Collision was a syllabus participatory form because Pilia was a teacher and also an artist. And so he produced a syllabus that was also a form of forum. According to him, it was a kind of action in which presentations in the lecture hall were interspersed, not only with poetry, music, and meals, but also a successful spatial fluidity was established between formal and informal gatherings. In his artistic practice, Villa, like Osorio, mixed substances such as semen, blood, and feather, and linked California and the Philippines to the vast Pacific context. So I think this is also interesting for the Island Hopping Project to also link up with California uh, uh, through the Pacific and also maybe through the Philippines because there is a strong connection between the Philippines and California through immigration. With the queer Osorio, the migrant Villa, and the radical Algabre, the trope of the Philippine would cease to merely pertain to a province or a post-colonial outpost. The Philippine becomes instead a way of making the world, a kind of method or a procedure in which art becomes a symptom of archipelagic scope, not a monolithic spectacle of solid and static continents. Thank you. Hi, thanks, Patrick. Yeah, gave us uh, such wonderful and very impressive uh, speech. Then uh, now I would like to invite the, all of the panel speakers to come back to join us. And uh, um, also uh, today we have a, a Takamori Noble and who is the uh, very talented uh, art credit and the Taiwanese curator here, and he will be uh, curating the uh, Asia Biennial in National Taiwan Museum uh, this year. So uh, today uh, we have him uh, will join us our conversations. So uh, Noble, are you here? Uh, yes, I'm here. Yeah. So um, yeah. If you have any uh, question you want to raise to uh, today's panelists, then please uh, go ahead. And also after that, we can have some conversation, uh, including uh, um, Jingi, he has some 
uh, write some question to everyone. Thank you. Okay. So thanks, uh, Darquan, and I'm also thanks to all the speakers with your uh, impression uh, representation today. So uh, I think today uh, we have discussed the topic from the Philippines, Taiwan to Okinawa and Jeju Island. And all the islands we are discussed today are located in between two empires, which means China and United States. And from the um, perspective, uh, I mean, from the perspective of Taiwan, I think we are not uh, enter a new uh, era because according to the uh, international communities what uh, recently discussed it is that a uh, lot of people that guess a new Cold War will begin uh, between uh, China and the United States and so from uh, the social atmospheres uh, of here we also we also feel uh, this kind of a new Cold War already became uh, normalized in our daily life especially sexually speaking. So, so I think uh, my questions is kind of uh, open questions is that how could we uh, react to this kind of a uh, new cold war and uh, combined with the COVID-19 pandemic, I think we are already entering the new era of uh, deglobalization. So how could we uh, reframe, how could we face it and how could we react to this kind of a post uh, globalization situation, which already becomes our new reality. Okay, so it's uh, my it's my open question. So maybe we can mm -hmm. yeah we can start the discussion from here. Okay, yeah. So uh, who wants to pick this question? Uh, Drinky or uh, Patch? Well, uh, thank you, Nobuo San, for for that big question yeah <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, i don't know if we can really uh, uh, successfully uh, respond to that uh, in this session uh, maybe just to say that uh, the biennale structure i mean uh, like the singapore biennale in that structure i try to do something within uh, uh, curatorially, so if 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 that is uh, an aspect or a sign of an effort to deglobalize, so I think we can look at a particular method methodology, a curatorial methodology that can uh, transform things from within. Yeah, and uh, in this uh, particular situation in Singapore. I wanted to uh, bring in uh, the post-colonial as a way to uh, uh, historicize, as a way to historicize the Biennale, and also as a way to complicate the narrative of colonialism in, in Singapore, because colonialism uh, uh, was also the basis of uh, globalization. No? So I think the post-colonial critique is important to raise uh, when we uh, confront the issue of globalization. So if you are thinking of a deglobalization, then maybe we can create this uh, relationship between post-colonial critique and uh, uh, like maybe deglobalizing practice or decolonial practice. So. It's a difficult task. It's also an everyday task. That's why um, instead of uh, endorsing the avant-garde as a model, I, I looked at popular resistance, everyday resistance that was embodied by Salud al Gabre. Uh, that, you know, no, revolu no uprising fails every step each one is a step in the right direction. So I want this kind of uh, politics uh, to be able to dissolve uh, overwhelming structure in everyday life. Yeah. It will be a patient struggle, yeah? and it will not be spectacular, but I think it will be lasting. Yeah. 
Okay. Uh, how about drinking? Uh, I would like to in insist that uh, globalization is the phenomenon after the 1997, especially it occurred AMF. At the time, Korean economy was almost um, demolished. But after that, we have to meet Shin Shiyu Shugi. How can I say in English? Shin Shiyu Shugi. Shin Shiyu Shugi. Neo capitalism. Neo capitalism. Mm. Yeah. Neo capitalism. So after the um, after the strong power of neo capitalism, uh, all of the world's the economic, not only economic system but also the cultural area. So we have to receive the global uh, culture. For example, biennial and then any other museum systems. Even though I by myself work as a museum professional in national museum now. Before that, I worked as a uh, uh, local government or museum uh, professional. So at that time, I organized uh, two biennial in Korea. One is uh, in Daejeon City, especially for the arts and science consilience project. So name of Daejeon Biennale now. And then in Jeju Island, so I, I found it Jeju Biennial. So mm -hmm. at that time, it was the entitled of tourism. The, the issue was tourism because Jeju Island is a, a tourist city. So anyway, so I by myself sincerely and really, really want to promote the local art scene mm -hmm. by the museum or biennial, that kind of artistic system. But I would like to insist that not only uh, systemic uh, uh, process, uh, for example, museum uh, system or uh, biannual. So that kinds of systemic uh, process is very important. But not only that kinds of system, but also the important thing is uh, art activism. So. I was a member of uh, Gyeonggi-do Pyeongtaek Daechuri Peace Art Movement. So 10 more years ago, uh, 1,000 artists gathered in that small village. And then we, we continued to uh, fight against the government, police, and even soldiers. So because of the extension of American army camp in South Korea, so in that small village, so village people want to uh, take care of their, their life, their daily life or their community, even though their community is broken now. But I remember that uh, thousands of uh, Korean artists gathered in that small village and then they can uh, organize themselves for the solidarity of arts and society and then uh, practice of arts and society. So now I would like to insist again, mm -hmm. uh, museum or uh, biennial projects can be, uh, uh, can be uh, well, good food, uh, delicious food, for the artist or art people, but that's not the point. Uh, even though I am a chief curator in National Museum, but I am very hungry because I cannot include directly as an art activist. So we have to. In uh, now we are talking about the solidarity of uh, East Asian art people. So not only system, but also outside of the system. We have to focus, so especially I want to insist Okinawa, Jeju Island, and Taiwan, and Hong Kong, that kinds of small, small power
can organize, and then they can fight against the great power. You already know that Taiwan is just 1% of China. Jeju Island is just 1% 1, 1 of uh, Korea. Okinawa is just 1% of, of uh, Japan. I mean that the 1% population, but that kind of small power can uh, solidarity, and then they can fight against the great power, and then they can say that we have to reorganize the peace, and then we have to do solidarity. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for Dringy, and um, I would like to echo uh, part of your uh, idea because uh, when I remember when we are discussing about the peace art, and I I raised my question, I said in Taiwan we don't have the term called peace art, but now you know after several years you know we work in uh, Taipei together, then I realized you know this kind of uh, movement as a uh, art activism yeah this which is really important you know we want uh, i think we should to redefine uh, what is the peace and what is the art or peace art it's not instead of like a harmony you know in um in mainland china or other uh, vietnam sort of the countries so uh yao sang Zhong, yeah hello Rui Zhong, i was still there <laughs> okay yeah, would you like to say uh, some, uh, you know, uh, initiative to all of the uh, participants today? And uh, um, Natsumi Sang, I know in uh, Okinawa, uh, you have faced a lot of um, the historical uh, challenges and also uh, the American uh, army based issues, which is really, really uh, you know, they are not really welcome for Okinawa peoples. Yeah, but, you know, due to this kind of like a two big empires uh, battles, it's kind of like um, we don't have choice and our voice uh, as an artist or as a, um, because artists, we are not the politicians. Yeah. So, um, the voice can be done or what kind of is our um, initiative or what should we go? I think well, I would like to hear all of your uh, advice. Thank you. Yes, uh, such as like uh, in Europe, they have a Manifesta uh, Banyu. Actually, the Manifesta Banyu is, is rethinking about what is Europe. So they will take place in different cities every two or three years. So in, by the way, uh, um, in the way, so maybe we can have a, have a, a organize, a, organize a foundation or a organization to, to run such kind of these uh, models to, to run. Maybe we can did some uh, expressions or some invent in such as like in Okinawa. Last time I uh, we went to Okinawa, we saw a lot um, terrible caves and uh, terrible stories. So uh, I, I I just such as like the the manifesto uh, last time take place in Berlin. They uh, they use a lot of the abandoned or the the ruins to to to. Mm -hmm to show the works or a conversation, uh, have a dialogue with local peoples. So I think it's uh, the, the way of the, uh, have a biennial in the museum. I think maybe we can think about, maybe we can take, uh, we can do something different. Mm. We, can be, we can do something in the, in the, in different island locations. And the location is about the very important history. It's a historical uh, event. Uh, and then we try, we can try to let, let people to rethink about the peaceful is very important. Such, such, like, uh, such as like last time, uh, Jin, uh, Jinji, we went to the Kimman together. And we, came, we saw actually the Kimman before has the Kimman 
art festival, but it's the uh, it's uh, fifteen years ago. So maybe maybe we can do something, some some exhibition there again because they have a budget, and then we can go to Okinawa and then we go, we can go to the Philippines and uh, Philippines some places as a land mm. uh, such as like uh, uh, I believe in 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 Philippines they have uh, some. Uh, when uh, some very important places, we can do something uh, different expressions or uh, performance just for there. So I think I uh, because the island always be uh, it's no voice or so in the uh, is 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 not important for the for the world. But now in in the COVID nineteen, so everybody is separate is uh, connect with the, uh, so so I think it's a good option, uh, uh, good good timing to do this link, island link mm -hmm. or the island link project to talking about the peace for is very important. Actually, uh, last year I did the Taiwan Biennial is also talking about is the peace, peaceful because I used the Buddha, Buddhism, um, conceptual to talk about uh, this, uh, we, we don't want to uh, um, kill any more uh, animals or um, make more, um, how can I say, uh, we can use an, an, uh, our Asian way to do the, mm -hmm. to do something, not just learning the Western way. Yes, that's why that, that is what I want okay. to see. Yeah, so, uh, Kazumi Sang, would you have uh, some feedback to us? Okay. Um, <laughs> um, I'm slow to consider and find this and words, but I'm, I'd like to share my um, feeling now. Um, you know, I feel that the uh, new movement of Okinawan artists that I mentioned is. Mm -hmm. um, partially result of the COVID-19 crisis um, in a situation where we could no longer move and was no longer um, be busy preparing for a large exhibition. Um, ironically, uh, there is more time for reflection on the present and the past. Um, um, it seems that many uh, artists are now reflecting on the fundamental meaning of their work and um, reaffirming the nature and climate of their hometown that unconscious, um, unconsciously uh, defines their acts of expression. So on the other hand, COVID-19 is a kind of disease of civilization and we are witnessing an emergency situation that is equally and then um, simultaneously uh, going on in the world. So um, I think it inevitably breeds a kind of world consciousness, um, the coexistence of um, patriotism, uh, which is not the same as nationalism. Um, patriotism and world consciousness mm -hmm. may um, encourage artists to awaken a new sense. So though, um, though I don't know if this will develop into an art movement in Okinawa. And then um, talking about the uh, island linked um, art activities, I hear that um, BG Art Salon is planning to hold an exhibition with the participation of artists from Taiwan, Okinawa, and Jeju, and mm -hmm. South Korea. Uh, now it is not possible for artists to gather in Taiwan to um, interact with each other. Um, it would be meaningful for Okinawan artists to be exposed to the realities of East Asia and, and to be given the experience of redefining Okinawa in that context. So I think um, it might be a possibility of um, the process of decolonization of Okinawa. Um, but we don't have that opportunity at the moment. There is um, really difficulties. So um, what I want to tell you, I'd like to travel. 
<laughs> okay. So thanks for uh, Kazumi Sang. And yeah, I think um, today uh, the conversation or this uh, forum uh, is also really important, you know, not only for uh, uh, BDR Salon or the people uh, in the uh, different uh, iron chains. Yeah, because um, we are all faced to this uh, COVID-19 era, then uh, I believe um, in maybe next year, then we can uh, freely after, you know, everyone get the vaccine injections, then we can freely to, uh, you know, um, yeah, meet, it, meet each other. Yeah, so uh, really thanks for uh, today you are participating and uh, give us a lot of uh, good uh, otherwise, and uh, your initiative uh, way. So, uh, our colleague uh, Zhi Yun, uh, you have something uh, want to talk to us, right? Yeah, um, I think it's uh, kind of the end of the um, forum. So, thank you all for participating um, in the forum and um, giving us such a um, inspiring discussion today. So. Um, by the way, we will have another forum on um, 10th July. So um, welcome you all to, to, to join us, you know, later on in July. And um, yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, so uh, thank you for your time. And uh, uh, thank you for the audience uh, who is uh, watching us online. Yeah, so please uh, stay in following us. And also, um, yeah, for all of the uh, the participants today. Yeah, thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you.